weapon. Burr! It's cold outside! If you live in the United States of America, you may be saying the same thing, according to CNN.com. Winter storm puts millions under alerts coast to coast as record low temperatures and power outages arrive before Christmas. The massive winter storm battering the United States with plunging temperatures coast to coast has left hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses without power and prompted more than a dozen governors to create emergency response plans ahead of Christmas weekend. So I want to show everyone a photograph of uh, this is a photograph that was taken approximately 40 minutes ago, maybe uh, it's possible. 47 minutes ago, according to Twitter.com. This is a photograph I took this morning. Uh, there is a blizzard going on right now. I've got my window open. I can see it. I can see it happening live. And uh, and I took this photo this morning. So the wind is so fierce that it, uh, it blew the phone from my hand. So uh, just throwing that out there. The storm well on its way to becoming even stronger Friday, which is today, has delivered heavy snow and ice. And ice. You can't forget the ice. Making for grim road conditions with poor visibility and leaving some drivers stranded in unbearably frigid temperatures. Travel is also being snarled good vocabulary with hundreds of miles of road closures and flight cancellations growing rapidly. Can we talk about, by the way, how dumb we are as a society, as a species that like the concept of a snow day, think about it, right? You're telling me I have to wait for an administrator's approval for whether or not I am forced at gunpoint to go into work, you know? So Gunpoint, you might be saying, oh, no one's forcing you to go to work. Oh, really? So I'll get fired, and then how am I going to pay my rent, right? So so on and so forth. And then if I stay in my house and I don't pay my rent, guess who comes? The cops. And guess what? The cops have guns. So you are forced at gunpoint on a boss's whim to risk your life in a snowstorm. You ever hear these stories of people that die? You know, I hate cars. You know, just you know, foreground. I'm an anti-car person. Every time, every possibility I can to talk about cars being terrible, I will, including right now. But you ever hear these stories of people that die because they're on their way to work during a snowstorm? Like, you ever hear this shit? Someone, like, we know that there's snow. We know it's a storm. We know it's coming, right? We, we can tell it's going to come days, weeks beforehand. We know it's going to come. We know people are going to die. Statistically speaking, we know during storms like this that's happening right now, right outside my window, I'm looking at it. We know statistically people will die. But bosses are like, what are the odds? We're going to be in the 98% of bosses that don't have people die coming into work. So they roll the dice. But you ever think about it? You don't get to make that decision. If you rolled the dice, let's say... You know, you want to get McDonald's for breakfast, right? And uh, it's a blizzard. And you're like, eh, is it worth getting in the car and risking the ice? And, and you make the decision, I want to get that fucking mm, that hash brown, baby, barbecue sauce, ketchup, french fries, fuck yeah. You want to go into McDonald's and you, you know, veer off the road into a ditch and, and blow up or whatever. You die because of ice and unsafe driving conditions. At least, at the very least... You had the decision-making power, right, in that instance. Now, again, you shouldn't be outside in these conditions. But at least you had the decision-making power. But most Americans, they don't have that power. They have no power. They are slaves, most Americans. Um, if you have a job and you don't have a good relationship with your boss, and when I say a good relationship, I mean your boss is your friend. I mean you hang out. I mean you can confide in your boss about anything. Right? Like they were a loved one, which let's be honest, 0% of people in this country have a relationship with their boss like that. Then you are a slave. If you are forced to drive through 
a minefield to get to work. You have no free will. You have no agency. You are a slave. You have no rights. And so, you know, I know we're doing a segment here about snow, but like, think about it. I know, I know. Why are, why do we have businesses open like fast food? Why are fast food businesses open during a blizzard? Does anyone know? Do people really need Wendy's during a blizzard? Do they really? I don't think so. Now, here's another question to all the people that uh, maybe they don't have a boss. Maybe, uh, you know, they're gig workers and they uh, use applications like Uber or Grubhub or Instacart or whatever, you know, delivery, car, taxi service, applications, whatever. Well, we know people are less likely, right, to want to drive on their own. And we know people are more likely to want to take a service like that. If people want to get McDonald's, they are more likely to get it through Uber Eats than they are to get in their own car and go there during a blizzard, right? Because most Americans, they don't care about delivery workers. They don't. Let's be honest. Think about it. Oh, it's a storm. It's raining outside. Let's order pizza. That's a that's a typical reaction in America, right? But Think about how many gig workers and delivery workers are going to die. Now, we could have a system where we have, you know, those snow plows that go through the streets. Imagine if those snow plows that go through the streets, they're specially designed craft, right? That are, you know, they're usable in snowstorms, right? They have traction. They're not going to spin off with ice, right? Imagine if we had a society where all the snow plows or the salt machines, whatever they are, right? They also had food with them, right? Let's say they doubled as a food truck. Just think about this. Think about this. Let's say, I'm just here to, to, to open your mind a little bit, make you think of an alternative way to live society, right? We don't need cars. We don't need individual transportation. Imagine we have a snow plow and it's a busy blizzard in the morning. Snow plows going through. It's like the ice cream, you know, truck. You know, they start singing a song. You go out there, you get some hot ass mac and cheese. You know, you're getting some very hot, warm food right at your doorstep in a society that would make sense, right? They would have vehicles that are able to traverse the snow. They would have vehicles that are able to, you know, withstand ice without veering off and spinning and doing 700 spins, right? But we don't live in that society. We live in a society where we force people to be individuals and to go kill themselves for other people. And so, you know... I don't know, man. This is what I think about whenever I see people driving. You know, I look out my window right now. I see people driving through the streets every once in a while. A car goes by. Why? Where do you need to go? I, like, I can see, like, you know, I'm looking out my window here, and I'm not going to show my window. I don't want to get doxxed here. But I can see that the there is ice on the on the road. I can see sparkles all over the road. I can see that there's snow falling and flowing through the air where do you need to go what is so important that you need to go drive somewhere right now but again work oh i need to go to work why because you're a slave you have no rights and you have you are forced at gunpoint to risk your life and some people will die now we know this again some people say oh only five people will die in these storms it's statistically insignificant fuck it who cares Oh, really? Five people are going to die? Well, what's your limit? Ten people die per blizzard because they were forced to go to work? Twenty people die per blizzard because they were forced to go to work? What is your limit? Now, again, we're talking about this during a pandemic where people are willing to kill each other to go to Thanksgiving and eat some fucking dry ass, fucking disgusting, genocidal fucking maniac shit, right? You know, people are willing to kill each other and themselves to get some cranberry sauce, right? Instead of just like making it themselves because they're fucking stupid and they don't know how to cook, right? So we live in a stupid fucking country. But think about this, right? You ever see these people? They're like the day before a blizzard happens, they're all flooding the grocery stores. You need to stock the fuck up, right? You know, I don't know, man. I've lived through a lot of blizzards. Now, I say this as someone who does not drive a car and I work from home. Right, so this is this is my perspective, right? And I'm saying this, anyone who's going out there and driving to work, 
during a blizzard, y'all got a raw deal in life. And I would highly recommend you do whatever you can to escape that situation. Now, again, you know, obviously everyone's positions are different. But if someone was pointing a gun at my head and saying, you got to go through this minefield. Otherwise, you're going to be thrown into the street during a blizzard and you will die of hypothermia. Right. I don't know, man. I would try my best to get out of that situation. And as a society, we should all work together to get out of these situations. But we don't because Americans want to kill each other. Americans would rather kill each other than do anything about their own personal situation to improve their own individual lives. They would rather kill other Americans than improve their own lives. That's why I don't, I don't like calling Americans selfish. I don't. A lot of people say Americans are selfish. Americans are not selfish. If Americans were selfish, we would have universal health care. We would have a universal basic income. We're the richest country in the history of humanity. There has never been more wealth concentrated inside of one nation's borders than the United States of America at all throughout human history. So the idea that we're gonna call Americans selfish is wrong. Americans are stupid. They are negligent. They are zombies, they are sheep, but they are not selfish. So anyway, uh, fuck Americans, fuck cars, and I love the snow. Personally, I might go on a walk. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people, um, about snow, and most people I know that live in cold environments do not like snow. Why is that? Because they drive, they have cars, and they have to go to work during the snow time. And so as a result, they develop an unhealthy association with snow. I think that that's sad, personally. And again, I say this. I have the privilege of being able to work from home and of not driving a car. That's my privilege, right? And I'm aware of that. But think about how American capitalism destroys your ability to just enjoy the world, the earth. You know, just like think about it. Snow, snow is beautiful. Snow is amazing. Snow is a gift from God. I don't believe in God, but if I did, snow would be a gift from that motherfucker. And yet, so many people are traumatized by harmful associations that they cannot enjoy one of the most beautiful aspects of being alive on this planet. Like, again, I'm telling you right now, I love snow. I love the feeling on my face that I get. I love the look of, you know, everything looks white way better than that asphalt hell world concrete jungle hell world that we live in right everything looks nice everything looks tranquil and most americans most people because of cars and because of capitalism they cannot enjoy seasonal changes isn't that crazy that's crazy to me that is crazy to me but anyway so I just wanted to talk about the snow today. A lot of people in the United States are dealing with snow right now, uh, myself included. And I uh, thought I'd uh, riff on that subject uh, for a little bit. So there you go.